Well, this is the uh, first time I've seen all this work in one space. Um, in 2001, I did uh, this drawing and this drawing with this idea of making a group like this. And uh, got to the second drawing and didn't know what else to do. So I just kind of put the drawings in a box. And then so the years following, I had to kind of trust that idea. and. Uh, so this is the culmination of, uh, and it's still kind of expanding. I'm still uh, adding to this group of work, but the idea is that uh, each of these pieces are not so much uh, kind of in the typical sense uh, an isolated artwork to be kind of seen and then moved to the next, but um, the idea is that these <coughs> are in dialogue, and so they're, they're meant to be seen as facets of a, a group of ideas. Um, so there's uh, kind of things that are common. There's uh, certain colors that you'll see in, in works, uh, such as red and blue, a lot of black. Uh, those have particular uh, historical and also kind of general symbolism. Uh, kind of the, the most basic uh, kind of duality between uh, light and dark and its many different meanings. Uh, there's also the duality between logic and intuition, kind of. Uh, ways of thinking that are the logic is kind of compartmentalized, always self-referential. Uh, intuition is much more expansive and kind of incorporates the unknown. Uh, so those are kind of ideas that are kind of governing uh, the construction of the works. Um, and then there's kind of historical references that can be uh, either subtle or implicit in the works. Uh, I've pulled uh, from uh, many different Kind of periods that I, I think are kind of pivotal in, in, in just thought in general, but also in art in terms of ways of seeing the world in different ways. Uh, those being like the Renaissance uh, and then several periods during the uh, 20th century. Uh, this and the uh, oval pairs are also symbolic. They're symbolic of any kind of relationship. Sometimes that relationship could be complementary. Sometimes it's antagonistic, but things like spring, fall, um, day, night, twilight, daylight. So all those colors are uh, very much deliberate in their choice and also in their placement in relation to the silhouette shapes that are kind of intermingling. Um, another kind of direct reference that's uh, incorporated in the title with uh, the work is the pair of photographs. Those are uh, self-portrait photographs on the, on the wall uh, by those three vertical panels. Um, and that, those panels are the same size and composition as uh, the famous painting <coughs> Piero della Francesca that hangs in the Uffizi in Florence. Uh, it's a portrait of the Duke and Duchess of Urbino. Mm -hmm. And so I carefully uh, built the panels, uh, re reworked the photographs in Photoshop over <coughs> several weeks. And, uh, and there's also uh, uh, Kind of the, I mentioned the symbolic color uh, using blue and red to denote uh, logic and intuition. And then if you want to take that idea, uh, that initially started with this uh, drawing with the diamond shapes on the far wall down here by the AM diptych. Um, and I like that just simple duality. We're, we're all familiar with the ideas of hot and cold on faucets. They're usually color coded. But then you can think about that in terms of uh, other relationships where there's kind of a polarity. Uh, and one such relationship is uh, I've taken from uh, the School of Athens Fresco in the Vatican by Raphael. Uh, that whole composition is kind of centered around uh, two simple figures, uh, Plato and Aristotle. Plato in that painting has a red bow on and he's pointing to the heavens and so his basic philosophy is uh, kind of predicated in this expansive idea that things can be uh, mysterious and still uh, <coughs> kind of quantified, whereas uh, Aristotle is gesturing towards the earth and his whole kind of premise is that anything that's important can be uh, observed uh, through kind of systematic thinking. So two different, very different divergent ways of uh, viewing the world. Um, and then so kind of this idea of the dialogue of works uh, behind the aluminum panels, uh, those are going to portrait dealing with that idea of uh, logic and intuition, logic being represented with me having uh, a hat I wear a lot uh, on the top panel and then on the bottom I'm taking the hat off. 
And behind those uh, panels, there are um, beveled pieces of wood that are painted blue and red, blue with the logic, red with the uh, intuition. So those are kind of a few of the uh, examples where I've kind of pulled in lots of differing ideas. And uh, so hopefully you can kind of bounce around between works and kind of let these ideas expand. Uh, it's kind of the general idea. I didn't want to, I didn't really like the idea several years ago of having these self-contained works. I like the idea of ideas growing and kind of continuing beyond borders, continuing beyond materials. And so uh, hopefully that's uh, apparent. <coughs> I think that's, I think I'll stop there. <laughs> if you guys have any questions about anything else, um, could you talk a little bit about your craftsmanship of things? I mean, you oh, yeah. go from sculptural pieces to um, drawings, paintings. So. Uh, yeah, I like to uh, make things well. I think that's important. Uh, and not just kind of a, in a material sense, but I think that carries an ethic with it. And uh, it's also uh, anything. If you, if you kind of think about this uh, general idea that if you attend everything as you need to, then uh, those things that <coughs> need to disappear will disappear. The things that need to be prominent will uh, be featured correctly. So it's kind of, uh, yeah, I just think it's uh, a very important thing. It's not kind of separate from concept. Uh, there's this typical notion that there's like, like this actual division between uh, making work, which is you can be formal and you can be conceptual. Uh, that's really only a matter of scale, and it's kind of a ridiculous idea that's been carried over from uh, people that don't really truly understand what goes into visual experience, in my opinion. Uh, and so yeah, I, I, uh, in school, I made it a point to absorb, I'm quite opinionated, uh, <coughs> I made it a point to absorb and learn as much as possible to kind of build my, uh, both my technical toolbox, but also my uh, visual toolbox, and so I, I would spend countless hours, probably too many hours in the library and then in studios, trying to learn as much and make as, as, um, as best use of my time in school as possible. And so the only thing I really haven't tried to master is glass, and I actually plan to do that in the next year or two. So, um, but yeah, I think craftsmanship, you know, it's, it's analogous with idea. It's not a separate component. Uh, this piece in the center of the room, the small uh, kind of quiet sculpture, uh, is a uh, welded steel sculpture. I spent a lot of time uh, working with metal early on in school. Uh, I made everything from small fabricated pieces to large outdoor uh, fabricated pieces, also cast bronze. Uh, and I actually uh, avoided doing that during grad school and then came back to it because the idea needed. And so this is right after uh, I finished grad school in 2001. Um, I've done this little kind of group of drawings dealing with this simple house shape. This house shape kind of having lots of different layers of meaning. Uh, but there's a, there's a double form here. There's a smaller house and a larger house. And so it's kind of a, it's kind of a self-portrait in some ways and it's also a portrait of my family. Um, you can see into it, and there's a certain physicality to it, but there's also, uh, you know, there's a lot of space, and air can pass through it, so uh, the title of it is uh, No Title in the Princeton's Silence, and so it kind of, uh, kind of is a poetic way of trying to get at that idea of uh, moments of silence and moments of communication. <coughs> 